Welcome to the Man TF Up podcast, hanging out in the man cave. Now, before I go any further, let me just remind everybody to please like, follow, subscribe, and share on all platforms, TikTok, Instagram, Facebook, Apple, Spotify, Google, Buzzsprout, Pandora. Lenny, did I leave anything out? Email your comments <laughs> and questions to Kimmy oh B goodness. at Man TF Up. They can't TV. have any com. questions or comments for 13 seconds into the, into <laughs> well, the podcast episode. Just remember it. Okay. That's all. Well, there you go. Yes. Kimmy B at mantfuptv.com. Obviously, I am Kimmy B, the incredible Lenny. And we've got our amazing guest today, Miss Darla Pursley. Darla, how you doing? Hi, I'm doing good. Thank you. It has taken us a minute to get your gorgeous behind up in here, but we're <laughs> glad that in 2022, we are finally able to make it happen. Yes, I'm, I'm excited to be here. Thank you. Now, you do a lot of stuff. I actually, Lenny, I don't know if you know this, but I heard about Darla from one of my um, co-hosts when I was mm -hmm. doing radio. Um, Darla was a good friend of his, and he just spoke super highly of her. Um, you know, she is an entrepreneur. She's got an incredible OnlyFans following. She's into real estate and all kinds of other things. He was obviously very impressed with the amount of money um, that you were out here making. She's a boss, um, mm -hmm. you know, but... She actually led to a few conversations on the radio, just different topics. We discussed things like, you know, um, dating somebody that, you know, works, you know, or has an OnlyFans account. Like, how do you handle that? Could you handle that? And, you know, of course, the calls were absolutely all over the place. Mm -hmm. um, but I was actually surprised at how many people here in South Florida were actually in relationships where, they were with somebody who was, you know, had an OnlyFans. They were like, yo, the supplemental income is ridiculous. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Um, one dude, I remember him calling in and just saying, you know, my girl brought it to my attention before she did it. So, like, there was already a respect factor there, right? Mm -hmm. like, she came to him and said, hey, this is what I'm thinking about doing, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, they kind of work it together. It's her account, but she, you know, he helps, you know, finance things and you know if anybody gets out of line or says anything crazy you know he's very quick I guess to step in and I don't know if they have dms or anything but um you know it's definitely a more common conversation now in 2022 than I think it ever was um before but before we get into it Darla if you could give our incredible man fam uh, a little backstory on you and how you know you've come to be sitting in the man cave on the man TF up podcast. Now in 2022, we would love to get to know you a little better. Okay. Awesome. Um, once again, like I said, thank you for having me. Um, <laughs> just breathe. <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> it's that simple. <laughs> I <need a> sec. <laughs> Take a sip. She's got her water. She's also got her bang. Um, do you now does bang pay you? Um, no, I wish that they would. <laughs> <laughs> Well, listen, they're based out of South Florida, too, which I did not know. Yeah. Until, Weston. Yeah. I started looking. I'm like, what the hell? You didn't know that? I didn't. Not for the longest time ever. And then we were doing some stuff with radio and trying to, like, work it out. And I was like, OK, if we can't get them, they're based. In yeah, that was one of those. That was one of those 15 year overnight successes. Yeah. OK. So they were working it, working it, working it. Oh, yeah. Then the next thing you know, that guy was in supplements everywhere. like 100 years ago. 100 years ago. And then he found the real. He found yeah. The then he. Yeah. <laughs> He, he found the magic. He said, wait a minute. He discovered that sex sells. Yes, him. That's, that's... magical to me. <laughs> <laughs> really good. Well, there you go. That might have just gotten you that deal. Right? <laughs> right? Bang is magical to me. That's going to be their new tagline. So where are you from? Because you're not from South Florida originally, right? Um, I'm from Virginia originally, born and raised. I moved to Florida 10 years ago. Okay. Actually, when I was 18. So You just said, I'm out. Yeah, pretty much. I uh, just wanted a new life, new beginning. Uh, there really wasn't much opportunity in Virginia. Mm -hmm. So um, I just went where the sun was, the fun was, and the money. <laughs> so now she's got herself a bang endorsement, and now, and Visit Florida is going to come a calling. Why are you giving her a way to bang? Maybe um, we'll use I, her here at oh, Dynamism. I love it. I'm sorry. Like, I'm sorry. Well, because we don't have a drink yet. You're selling us short. We don't have a drink yet. That's so okay. We got plenty of other stuff. Okay. You're right. You're right. I take it all back. <laughs> we might do a little editing. You guys um, have my full support. <laughs> well, you have ours as well. So you came down uh, to Sunny Fun, South Florida. Well, Sun Fun and the money, right? Yeah. Um, and what have you been doing for the past 10 years? Um, well, I originally started off dancing. Mm -hmm. So I was dancing for about six years. Um, and I actually got injured while I was working. Mm -hmm. 
and I got a breast injury, a chest injury, um, while I was working. And actually, that's why I retired from dancing. Um, I was on bed rest for about a year, had three surgeries in a year, and I, I couldn't do anything mm -hmm. like even drive or brush my own hair, or shower myself. Uh, I couldn't use my upper body at all. Oh my God. So um, during that process, I began to do the photo shoots mm -hmm. because, you know, I still looked and mm -hmm. uh, appeared okay mm -hmm. uh, because everything was kind of internal, the issues. So no one could really physically tell that something was wrong mm -hmm. with me. Um, this wasn't like a pole issue. Like, um, no, it actually was. Uh, one on one personal oh. issue. Yeah. Okay, well that's interesting. I was gonna say because I've been watching. Well, that like was super unfortunate, but yeah, um, clearly, yeah. But things can happen in the workplace. Well, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> facts. That's a good disclaimer. But no, I was gonna say because TikTok, because you know it's it's weird. Like ten years ago, things were very different, right? Like I mean, first of all, South Florida, the South is known for its strip clubs. Like that just is what it is. Yeah. Um, and it's a very different culture down here. I absolutely love it like I had never been at a strip club before where you could get like incredible food and also like the level of athleticism with some of the girls like with their pole work and everything else but you weren't seeing it on social media you know you had to physically be in a club in order to witness these acrobatic feats. I don't know I went to this strip club in Milwaukee one time called Hoops mm -hmm. and this girl crushed a can between her tits without without her arms oh my god she was like Ksh. It sounds very Midwest. It was, oh yeah, it, it was like, very Midwest. I mean, that, that was kind of athletic. She's been drinking a lot of Coors. <laughs> that was kind of <laughs> like, athletic. What is, what, what's the beer that's made in Milwaukee? Uh, old Milwaukee. Oh, well, there you go. <laughs> so maybe she's been drinking a lot of or that. Or Bush, too, I think. Well, no, right? but I mean, it's just like, like I said, until I came to Miami, you know, for my higher education, uh -huh. I found myself at Black Gold and at the Rolex. <laughs> Uh, and at Tootsie's and at Scarlet's and at a lot of other places. We like, got to call out Cheetah. He's 11. my brother. Oh, Cheetah. We got to call out Cheetah. 11. 11. Well, yeah, but 11 is more recent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I was, these are like, I mean, I Old came school. here. That's I came actually in, where I got injured. At 11? Yeah. Oh, my God. But I love 11. I absolutely <laughs> love 11. <laughs> um, it wasn't their fault. <laughs> well, no, I mean, it's, but it's crazy. But that's kind of a testament to the growth of the industry and the acceptance of it. Because 11 is really... It's like a burlesque. I mean, the guy, he was just having a really good night, I guess. And um, Unfortunately, you weren't. Yeah, so, you know, he got excited, I guess. <laughs> He's having fun. I don't know. I'm excited. Jesus. <laughs> a little so, too. Did he get, did, let me ask you a question. After the incident happened, was he allowed to stay or did he get? Well, I really didn't know or understand at the time, you know, how bad the injury was. Um, I didn't, I didn't know until later, a few months later. Um, and then I ended up just. I was in so much pain that I really couldn't work mm -hmm. anymore um, because dancing obviously requires mm -hmm. being topless. Yeah. So I couldn't go without support on my breast. Oh my God. Uh, after having three surgeries. Um, and unfortunately, one of the surgeries was a medical malpractice I went through and uh, mm. made it worse. So I, I was on bed rest for a very long time. And at one point, I felt like. I had no hope because the only experience I had was dancing mm -hmm. and I really didn't know what else I was going to do. And I only had so much money saved and I knew that I couldn't live off of that amount forever. Yep. So um, OnlyFans was brought to my attention after I started, you know, uh, with Instagram, mm -hmm. I started doing photo shoots and my following like drastically grew mm -hmm. within a year. I mean, I had over 500,000 and by year two, wow. I was almost at 800,000. Um, three years in, you know, almost a million. And um, so I started the OnlyFans about four years ago. Uh, so right this is before I started, it really Yeah, blew I started up. Okay. before the whole pandemic and before it became kind of like a popular mm -hmm. trend. Normal thing. Yeah. Yeah, like it was, it was really unheard of to do OnlyFans um, when I was doing it in the beginning. And... Um, <clears throat> But at the time, it was a great blessing for me because I was stuck at home, injured, you know, and I really couldn't do much at all. Mm -hmm. So with having that platform, um, I was able to work from my phone, from my bed, mm -hmm. uh, you know, on bed rest mm -hmm. and still make support yourself. Yeah. Money to support myself. Well, I was just like, as she's talking about how many surgeries did you have to have? Three, Three surgeries. Yes. And. 
no offense, I don't know how many strip clubs are providing health insurance. No. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, Yeah, they don't. Um, and you also, you know, sign paperwork. You're fully yeah. responsible for all You're an independent contractor. So, yeah, so it's it's 100% your responsibility. So I had to pay out of pocket as well for all of the surgeries. And yeah, so that money, even if you had saved every penny, was going to go quickly because surgery yeah, is medical expensive. Bills. Yeah, Yeah. Holy So that was a really shit. tough situation there. And um, honestly, being in that much pain every single day um, is just, it's, you know, it takes a toll on you. It's very draining emotionally. Mm -hmm. and, um, and it's just kind of crazy that I had that uh, injury there because a few years prior, sorry. That's okay. Nestor, that <laughs> Not wasn't me this time. It's okay. usually all Kimmy does it me. seven do times an episode. Seven to ten times an episode, so don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> So a few years prior, I had actually gotten into a car accident, um, which left me with nerve damage on the left side of my entire body. So unfortunately, the injury was on the left side of my body, which made it even harder to heal um, with kind of like two injuries mm -hmm. in the same yep. mm -hmm. place, you know. And uh, so that was really, really difficult to go through. Um, just, you know, my arms for like this practically for an entire year and I couldn't move from my bed. Uh, but I could work on my phone. There you go. And you figured out a way. Like this. So <laughs> really work. That works. Your phone. <laughs> so um, really that's how I started my online career. I like that. Um, um, listen, I'm kind of guessing that you had a good man to take care of you for that time because you were. I, I did. Or yeah. somebody to take yes, care of you for that. Um, thankfully, yes. Um, because that really. It's not something you can get through on your own because you just yeah. cannot use your upper body at all. So, um, you know, I had difficulty even brushing my own hair, mm -hmm. raising my, my Yeah, hair. I had shoulder surgery in April, and I just got to full range of motion in December. I know that that was heartbreaking for you to not be able to brush your hair, Lenny. That was probably the hardest part <laughs> oh. of your recovery. I couldn't it? even wash my hair with this <laughs> oh. hand. You know, I got to get to here. And it was like a milestone to be able to bend my head over and touch it. Yeah. But, you know, it's, yeah, I so get you it. you definitely understand, yeah. Yeah, it's, yeah it's it was a down. Thing. Well, you don't, you don't really know until you go through it, you know, and that's with anything in life. Um, you just don't know until you know. I was going to say, too, <laughs> but if, if your career is using your body, using your looks, which for many, of it's like if I, I lost my voice for 10 days one time, yeah. and it was the scariest 10 days of my life. Like, because when you don't know, you're like, I so, talk for a living. My like, left hand thought I divorced it. Well, that's what? exactly how I felt. <laughs> <laughs> bag. Oh. Nobody needed to know that much about you and your left hand, Lenny. Just for, for I'm the I'm just record. saying. Um, but no, that's that's got to be scary. But that's one of the questions that we ask everybody. You know, obviously, this is the Man TF Up, the Man the Fuck Up podcast. Um, and it yeah. sounds to me like you know a thing or two about manning the fuck up. Well, yeah, I had no choice. So uh, <laughs> if I didn't, I, I definitely would have been going down fast. Yeah. It, because of the situation that I was in. And I, I really had no prior experience. But the thing is, I really loved what I did as well. I loved, you know, getting glammed up mm -hmm. and, you know, going in such a lively environment and talking to people. I'm a people person and I enjoy making people happy, making mm -hmm. people smile. So I was like, how can I do this just in another way and still be able to use my looks and mm -hmm. all that to monetize. And this was just a great way to still interact mm -hmm. with, I guess, my fans, you know, now that I have. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, you definitely have fans. Yeah. <laughs> you don't get to a million followers on Instagram without fans. No, That's definitely. That's literally what they are. <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Like, I just, I think about it, though, and it's one of those things where, as a woman who, again, you know, absolutely beautiful and has chosen this this path, is it ever hard? Do you, do you find that it's difficult to explain to people why this is the direction you took your life in? Do you understand? Do you understand what I'm saying? Like, I feel like sometimes people, and I'm I can't even say sometimes people because I'm that way. I'm judgy. Like, I'm a judgmental individual. Like, and I'll see a beautiful person, and I'm like, why? She probably can offer so much more. But then I had to like step back over time and look at it and go. If you're comp that's an insecurity on my own part. You understand what I'm saying? Like you we project that onto others because it's something I could never do personally because I'm not that confident. Like period. It just it is what it is. Um so 
as I've evolved and grown as a person, like I can step back and look at it. And if you're clearing bank and you're able to take care of yourself and, you know, you've done some incredible things, but like, what is your most common, really people, don't you know I'm doing a podcast? Um, what is, you know, maybe the, the biggest pushback that you've gotten from people when you try to, when you tell them what you do or when you talk about your career? Um, I really don't, I don't listen to negative, um, p comments. Mm -hmm. Uh, I don't think I get much. Okay. To be honest. Um, because I'm very open and honest and upfront with who I am when I do meet someone. And I feel like they usually just accept me for who I am and my character as a person. And th they don't end up judging me mm -hmm. based on that because I carry myself in a good way. Mm -hmm. I yeah, like I don't that. think, how would anybody know unless you, you know? I don't get negative um, feedback online either. Yeah, but I, I mean, like if you're out in public and somebody approaches you and, hey, what do you do? And what do you do? And, you know, I'm a model. You know, I mean, where, I where does it go from there? I usually don't um, just, that's not the first thing I say is OnlyFans, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know? Yeah, yeah. just, you know. Yeah, of course, because um, I, I guess, pe like you said, people can be judgmental and mm -hmm. maybe I don't want the backlash because yeah. I'm a very uh, positive type person yeah. and I don't mm -hmm. want to have those type of, and I just kind of like to feel out the person and see what they're comfortable with and um, if if they seem like they'd be comfortable with me saying that, then I go into more detail of what I do. Well, I was gonna, now you have multiple because checks. I do though. also. Yeah, yeah, I, you know, <laughs> yeah. She's got other things she can she can yeah. lead with. Yeah, but she, she you know, fills out the room. It's kind of crazy. But she mentioned the men in her life before the yeah. started. You know, some of them had an issue with yeah with not so much what she was doing, but yeah. with her success with the effectiveness of oh, what she yeah. was doing. That is. That has definitely uh, been a very common thing for me in, you know, past relationships, uh, particularly my first boyfriend that I had when I started my OnlyFans. Uh, we were together for a majority of the beginning of my OnlyFans. And I guess, you know, I started with a low following on Instagram. Um, I was injured and... I was in a pretty hopeless place. When he, he was the one me. that was taking care of you. Yeah, so okay. he met me like that, and I guess when I really um, outgrew that and I, I really started growing my platform and he saw real numbers coming in on the OnlyFans, uh, that's when he definitely got upset and he, he just felt entitled. Like, he um, deserved mm -hmm. a larger cut of the OnlyFans when I already provided for his entire life, uh, mm -hmm. you know, food, grocery, or whatever, everything, the bills, and I practically taken care of him. Mm -hmm. And I just, he felt like he was entitled to even more, you know, but that just shows how did you people that? are ungrateful. <laughs> I, I guess so. I but, guess. So what do you do in that situation, though? Like, how do you put your foot down? What do you say? Like, when do you draw the line? There's the door. <laughs> well, yeah, when uh, he asked for X amount of dollars, I said, this is absolutely ridiculous, and I'm just not going to agree to this. I don't know what you think, especially when you're not actually doing a lot of the work. You know, I'm sure you guys know you work as a team, so um, when one person's doing a lot more of mm -hmm. the work than the other, you feel like it's a little unfair when it's time to get the benefit. Not only that, it's a partnership. They're, they're, re they're in a relationship. Yeah. You should never ask your wife and or too, girlfriend you know? for Even more if money. You are helping, I, I feel like, you know. Yeah. I mean, you know, it's like that's just not a that's, but like, I, in my mind, that's, a man. that's not a man thing. Right. Yeah. Okay. How uh, much could he have been doing to even help? Like, I'm just thinking like you know? cameraman, whatever. It doesn't yeah, matter. The like point that. is, the point is, you know, I mean, really? Is this a relationship? So, you know, he was putting the dollar before the yeah. Woman, mm -hmm. you know, which is not a manly thing but to do. But that just sounds like that was an insecurity issue on yeah, his part. Absolutely. It definitely was. Um, he had a lot of insecurities. But also when you just start seeing numbers grow, that makes insecurities even larger. Mm -hmm. Because, um, you know, some people see those numbers and say, oh, well, I deserve this. But what about the past two years when I was sitting there injured on my phone working mm -hmm. every single day for 10 hours a day? What growing about that? this, yeah, to like get growing this. I had to, I had to brand myself to begin with, or there would be 
no monetization from the OnlyFans at all. I mean, yeah. without Darla Persley, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. you know, and then he felt he was so entitled, but without Darla Persley, needless to there say, no him either. He's not here he's, anymore. No, well, no. There <laughs> <Yeah>. you go. <laughs> I love that. But no, but that's, but like that to me, it's one of those things like when we talk about it and I think people just have a lot of misperceptions about influencer anything. And that's whether, you know, you have a, or your personality on OnlyFans, you know, there's work that goes into it. But to me, if he's not out there getting you branding deals, if he's not out there bringing things. Sh- yeah. Bringing stuff to the, the table. the timer on the camera. You know what I mean? Does Meeting not, with Bang going, he, hey. Yeah, like why? Uh, uh, yes. If he was doing his job, Darla, you would be getting paid by Man Well, I'm up. a very fair and yes. generous person. So I definitely would have, you know. Um, but I'm like I said, I'm very fair. Mm-hmm. And if I don't feel like it's fair, then it's just not fair. There you go. <laughs> Do you feel that people try to to take advantage of you though because of the way that you look and because you have such an endearing you know open fair personality yes quite often yeah <laughs> yes. but they clearly are underestimating you right yes but um i've also done a lot of self um care self work mm-hmm. uh therapy all of mm-hmm. that so um i've gained more confidence and i can also recognize that much easier now mm-hmm. with the work that i've done with myself we're we're fans of therapy here yeah at man tf up hey you know. for sure i didn't mean to look I'm directly at you Len. really what are you what are you saying i'm just saying we are we are fans of th- like th- it is so somebody's beneficial gotta on, keep me from going off the yes deep end. on so many levels but also yeah. sometimes they have to tell you you know when you're in the right when you're in the wrong like and there's nothing better than having a completely objective person with no nothing to gain you know, from yeah, I don't get too much right and wrong, but I definitely get a lot off my chest. Yeah, well, and sometimes that's just that's, that's what you need, right? Like that's a great place yeah. to start with healing and and any of those things is just being able to get whatever you're carrying inside out. And I think a lot of times, especially for women, it's difficult to do that. Like I'm not saying men is difficult too; it's difficult for all of us. Let me not. I think it's more difficult for, for men. Yeah. I think probably men, from my experience. They don't like to talk. But yeah. 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 You know, I, I mean, mean, I think that, but, but women, nothing though, like, the men. Yeah. <laughs> no, but that, I mean, that's, that's fact. That's why I had to take it back. I think it's difficult for men to talk, but I think that women hold on to a lot of trauma. Like, women hold on to a yeah. lot of things and just keep it pushing. We are like elastics. When I tell you we bounce back, think about all the women in your life that you know that have been cheated on, all the women who have worked twice as hard to get half as far, all the women who have had the weight of, you know, single motherhood, and there's not that there's not incredible single dads. I'm just saying women are just re- extremely resilient individuals, and we are just programmed to keep it moving because people depend on us in different ways than with men. You know what I mean? Like, we might bitch about some shit but it it's different than what you're holding you know suppressing actual trauma and and things like that yeah Yeah. i feel like um (laughs) Uh, whatever you say kimmy i totally i totally agree with you 100 percent. i pulled the trauma card and lenny was like i'm gonna shut up well i did a lot of hypnosis therapy actually which was very effective for trauma and um i would highly recommend it to anyone that's going through something or struggling with something that they feel they haven't been able to get past for mm-hmm. many, many years um, because hypnosis is life-changing. It's just like, it's helped me get past things that I held on to my entire mm-hmm. life. So and That you probably didn't even realize you were necessarily holding on to. That too, like subconsciously blocking it mm-hmm. out of my mind. So Mind is crazy. It Have was you just amazing. Yes, I actually tried it. I really loved it. You liked it, it didn't you? Yeah, I loved it. I really, I really do recommend it. Mm. Well, I loved it. Know. Okay. Hypnosis therapy is on the bucket yeah. list. <laughs> on the For bucket anyone list. anyone struggling. <laughs> now, maybe we should have a kook class like yoga or something. <laughs> sure. D- like group d- hypnosis. I love it. Oh I'm here for it. <laughs> I'm here for it. Although, just... Nestor, Nestor, you can't be hypnotized because somebody's got to be able to record all this stuff. You know what I mean? Like, we got to make uh, sure that... Oh, oh you don't want to You got to selfie this. record. You gotta, can you imagine... Did you ever record any of your house? sessions? Um, no, I didn't. Mm. No. But um, I have full remembrance. Like, did they bring everything that you had? Ooh, that's it's, a lot. You know, it's hypnosis, but it's it it's also, it's a trance. It's like a trance-like state versus... It also is really effective if you've lost someone close to you. Mm-hmm. It's very good for that as well. Mm. 
Oh my goodness, I'm learning so much. It's like tantric sex, you know, you get into that zone. It it is. It's that's that's well, almost where you're going to. It's really just going to like a deep, a different yeah, yeah. level All right, of sting. inside um, just telling you of your subconscious and just it's not like you're erasing your memory. You still have full consciousness of the memory, but you're just kind of like reliving the memory and p- replaying it in a way that is suitable for you that brings you happiness instead of pain or mm. trauma whatever happened in that memory that's wild did you do that therapy here yes in miami beach hey okay. yeah well we got access to it i love okay. it um i mean like i said we brought you in it's man tf up when you see man tf up man the fuck up what does that immediately bring to your mind like what does that mean to you if you hear somebody say that um, stop complaining and just do it. <laughs> just do it. Damn you, Nike. <laughs> they stole it. They from us. stole it. So no. I have some questions and well, I just stop complaining. Pretty much man the fuck <laughs> up is stop complaining and just get the work done. Get it done. I like yeah. it. Like, just do it. Just get it done and don't make excuses because we all are capable of doing anything that we put our mind to. She's Bam. checking all the boxes. All of them. Go ahead, Len. I'm no, I have it. I have questions about OnlyFans because I, you know, mm-hmm. I've heard about it. I've and I'm not a I'm not one of those I'm online. I'm here for all the OnlyFans questions. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not one of those <laughs> online subscribe okay. to follow. But you want people to blah blah. But you blah. want people to online subscribe and follow us. For free, a little quid for pro free. quo needs to happen. Uh, yes, but for saying. free, you know, there's okay. a there's a difference. Yep, there's a difference. I've never been a pay per view guy. I mean, I just I just was never me. Okay, maybe you know? you've never uh, found a girl that you were so that infatuated inspired you that you wanted to. Uh... I've found plenty. But... <laughs> <laughs> stick to your OnlyFans <laughs> questions, like stick to your OnlyFans. But <laughs> that's besides the point. Okay, the point is that I've just never been that. So. You know, I've heard about it and I haven't really and and don't get me wrong, I've looked into a lot of you know, I'm well versed in the universe. Money's of, all about making money. I'm well versed in the universe of freak shows and all that fun stuff. Okay. You know, and I, I don't know OnlyFans from what I've heard is, you know, a lot of IG girls and you just go to the next level that you can't do on IG. And then I've heard fetish stuff and I've heard, you know, dressing up like pirates and I've heard I've heard all kinds of different genres under the OnlyFans thing. And I don't know if you have other girls, you know, that are in OnlyFans that do different things than you do. I'm just curious about what it is Well, as far as that. You know, I mean, are you a fetish girl? Of course, um, I'm not. Um, but of course everyone's different and the great thing about OnlyFans is that you have the option to Mm -hmm. be 100% yourself and you can make your own level of rules and limitations Mm -hmm. um, of what you're comfortable with doing so each girl is comfortable with different things you know they all have different levels of Mm -hmm. comfortability and um, what one girl might do on OnlyFans is not necessarily what the next might do and also OnlyFans has a stigma for being a sexualized platform and it's not necessarily only used for that either. It can be used for workouts, mm-hmm. for mm-hmm. cooking, and somebody that or made a fortune art, you know. Doing that. Um, so really OnlyFans could be used. And a lot of artists are actually using it as a way yeah. to monetize their behind the scenes, mm-hmm. you know, content yeah. and things like that. Like the pants. teaching people on it, like how to's. Um, diff- different things, but they just made it very user. Well, well, I, user from I think both ends too, like friendly. Mm-hmm. They made it easy to get paid. They made it easy for you to subscribe. Yeah. There's so many different levels I think too of of how you can monetize yeah. the platform. Like you can do the flat subscription rate, and then you can give I think like teaser content, and you can pay to get more. Like there's sounds so like you've been stalking ways. some OnlyFans. People. Not because <laughs> you know, like when I was at the radio here's again. The deal. No, because OnlyFans has been around, like Darla said, yeah, for a while. Yeah. It just it became very, very prominent during COVID, during during COVID, COVID because, yeah. hello, so many people's avenues of income were shut and, down. Uh, my highest peak on OnlyFans was during COVID. When immediately when COVID hit, OnlyFans just drastically mm-hmm. went up. Skyrocketed. Yeah, because everyone was inside and mm-hmm. everyone's so bored. 
Yeah. Everyone. Well, and there was a lot of and hype about it. nobody's checking your home computer like they are your work computer. <laughs> <laughs> That's factual. But also, too, there were so many people on more, I think, mainstream forms of social media talking about OnlyFans yeah. that it piqued a lot of people's... I think interest because OnlyFans didn't start off as that. It kind of transitioned when folks started getting kicked off of Snapchat and 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 Instagram. People kind of started to congregate in that OnlyFans yeah. space. And again, they made the monetization so easy. And it was wild because a lot of people were doing some wild shit on Snapchat. Like yeah, Snapchat really got thing. turned out first. Like Instagram has always been PG. 13, yeah, but you had right? to chase the money on those platforms. Yeah, and OnlyFans just said, okay, well, we'll just... We'll, and Put it all in one place Yeah, to make it easier. And, I mean, so do you... So, I guess my biggest question, again, because for me, when you start to see the amount of people that are in this space now, like, I was literally Googling just OnlyFans stories recent, right? Because, you know, obviously when we do the podcast, we post up on TikTok and we want to go with trending topics. Um, and one of the stories that came up was a dad and a, a son and a father in the UK... The son started off on OnlyFans, you know, posting nude pictures. He was making like nine thousand dollars a month. And the he dad? Just, no, the the son was. Oh. And then the son was like, you know what? I just need to do something that's going to make people talk about this page. Like, what? Like, I need to take it to the next level because I know there's money here to be made. Mm -hmm. So he asked his dad if his dad would come on the page. And I guess he posted one picture of his dad shirtless, like his back, and the. the whatever went, went mental now the two of them do this they don't do weird shit he's like i've never seen my dad's package like you know we we avert each other's eyes but they do like you know nude photo shoots together or whatever and they're clearing 40 grand a month like and he's like you know pops pops is a plumber in maybe real we should drop the podcast pops is a plumber <laughs> in real life you know what i mean like he still has his plumber job uh -huh. in the uk and i'm not talking about well the uk is notorious for that kind of crazy stuff Shit. But I'm just saying, like, that's, it's just, there's so many everyday people that have now walked into this platform and saw so much economic growth from it that when it was threatened to be shut down, how many, like, I'm sure you were following it because you're, I mean, this is a major source of income for you, but like, remember when they were threatening to change the terms of service? Yeah, I just lost my Instagram. Oh, God. <laughs> so you're probably like, the first no, time. not you too. <laughs> first time around. <laughs> um, but then you started to see all these stories about, you know, middle American mom, like wives and husband, you know, that were just like the, the milf next door. So I was, know? I was extra scared <laughs> at the time. I'm sure. I'm sure. Like, oh God. So, <laughs> but you guys, you saved your own platform. No, of course. Yeah. Like no. The, thank God. Yeah. Um, thank God. All the social media platforms. Are Did you guys well. petition and stuff like that? Like what, how do we? Um, no, I just. I just waited it out to see what was going to actually happen. Um, thankfully, nothing did happen. Yeah. Because I guess just like my injury uh, story that I told earlier, I guess I would just have to figure out the next thing to do. I think you land on your feet. Yeah. <laughs> but know? OnlyFans would be absolutely nothing but if they, they dropped nothing. With the OnlyFans, thankfully, with the OnlyFans money um, that I have been able to make and save, um, I, I think I'd be all right. Well, you're now, you do real estate, right? Well, yeah, I did just buy a house um, a year ago, and I am looking currently for my next purchase. I'm looking for a condo to rent nice. out. Nice. Like yeah. to do some, like, airbnb -y yeah. stuff? Yeah. I'd like to get it, um, like, permanently occupied. If <laughs> All right. Mm -hmm. I want that consistent money. Right? Yeah. <laughs> I want you to sign a lease. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and then you also have a lash line, too, right? Yeah, these are the lashes. Hey. Wait, okay. The Bat them real quick. There you go. Oh. <laughs> My good side. <laughs> so do you get a lot of people to like support the other products that you that you work with via your social media following? Yeah, no. Um, thankfully, with over the years of meeting so many other influencers with large followings um, and doing so many collaborations in New York, Vegas, and L.A., um, I've been able to meet some really, really big, um, you know, models mm -hmm. that have great platforms five, ten plus million, and I've been able to get them mm -hmm. to get the lashes mm -hmm. on, get the lashes out, and I've sent out a lot of influencer packages for different influencers. I gotta, yo, people think that just posting, fo like, you were talking about this before, Lenny, like how there's so many kids and there's so many just people, parents that think that, you know, being an influencer 
is like taking the lazy way out or whatever. I don't want to say like the lazy way out, but that there's no work that goes into it. And like, that's absolutely incorrect. Dar- yes, like she, I know. You can hear the hustle, right? We were talking about college, you know, a college, kids going to college and how college enrollment is dropping. And I said, part of it is because these kids are looking at, I mean, I have three kids, so two in the, in the teen range. So, they're looking at this stuff going, wow, I want to do that. It's so easy. And, and they don't get the – and they're at, they're at an age where they can't think clearly because they're teenagers and their hormones are going nuts. Um, and they think, oh, I'm going to just be an influencer. I'm not going to go to college because I don't need to, and I'm going to do this. And Gary Vee says, you don't need to go to college. And, yeah, I mean, I never went – well, I did go to college, but I was 30. Um, but I dropped out of school in middle school, and it, it you don't need it, but you need other things. And that's what the kids aren't realizing is that they need other things, and they have to put in the time and the effort. You know, I have one that— Really, you need to be passionate yeah. about what you're doing. And t- time meets work. Yeah. It's yeah. work. You heard her. She said 10, 10 hours, hours a day, a day yeah. with a broken boob. <laughs> exactly that. and nerve damage and nerve damage on yeah. the whole left side of her yeah no the whole left side and yeah. and then but here's the here's the better part about that is when dealing with that and still doing photo shoot and that's what made and the fuck up is about that's right <laughs> oh yes but it's like because and not only that, but like very hard <laughs> that shit is exhausting in and of itself like just being in radio and lenny you've been on set for photo shoot. Like, nothing is easy about this no they're long days it's uncomfortable situations right like sometimes you know and you just have to keep, you know, going. You have to get it done. Because at the end of the day, like, if you don't, no one else will. No, and there's failure that comes with it, too. Like you said, it took you, you know, you you saw growth. But here you are, you're making all of this money. You know, you're dancing. You're, I'm sure, thinking, oh, like, I've got this. Then you have a setback. Yeah. Right? And now you have to figure out, okay, what am I going to do next? And now you find this. But then it's time. Like you said, it's 10 hours a day. And nothing can ever happen fast enough, right? Like, you're like, when is it going to happen? When is it going to yeah. go viral? When is it going to click? It's really 24 hours a day. <laughs> so it's it's give or take just yeah. all day, mm-hmm. every day, you know. If you want to be successful, yeah, yeah. you have to eat, sleep, breathe, live you what you're wake doing. wake up with that mindset, yeah. yeah, every day. And it is, it's so important. We t- I think every- And that alone is exhausting. <laughs> well, and everybody that we've had on this show, we've talked about, you know, passion and purpose you know what I mean and and if you can find those things that's where you need to be like because then when you're putting in 20 hours 23 hours in a day when you want to give up you don't because like you said you're passionate about it and you really do love what you do and there's clearly a lot of things that you love about what you do like you said making people happy the money is great you know what I'm saying you get to be creative um and and that's always, you know, something incredible. But I do want to ask you, do you think that the OnlyFans space kind of has changed the game? Because like you said, you guys have the power now. Like, it's not like having to go to somebody's club, right? Where it's, you know, I have to pay this person out and this person out and this person out and whatever, whatever. And it's your rules. And if God forbid something happens to me, there's whatever. Like, there's got to be a level of safety behind it. You know, like, again, you're in the comfort a lot of times of your own house, right? Like... You handle who's involved. You handle what pictures you want. You get to decide who gets to subscribe, and you can, I'm sure, kick them out if they're inappropriate. Are, can yeah. people be inappropriate on there? Um, I think. That's like, do they comment? Like, I don't know how it works. Like, do they? Do you like with the subscription page? Like, do they get? I mean, to are you talk live? You or are you? Um, no, I don't go live uh, on my OnlyFans. It's really but just like pictures. Is there? And stuff. Is there? The ability As to do I that? I explained earlier with my camera. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> believe it or not, Darla probably seems extremely confident, confident and comfortable in many situations, but you'd be surprised at what a camera can do to a lot of very yes. confident people. I'm waiting for her to sit back and relax. I know, <laughs> I know, I know. I just have um, good posture. Oh. This is just how I. That's really cool. Sit. Okay, you look like you look very tiny in that chair. Oh, <laughs> I'm tiny. only five two. Yeah. yeah. Um, but do you think that it's it's given people a little bit more freedom and a little bit more kind of you know em- empowered, especially like well I mean there's a ton of men definitely um, I'm much too. happier good with having the financial freedom that OnlyFans has given mm-hmm. me, but over time, um, just like being in that industry for so long, I find myself 
kind of wanting to do something else, mm-hmm. um, not so sexualized, mm-hmm. which I still enjoy the beauty aspect of it. Getting, you know, like hair, makeup. Glam is fun. Good, you mm-hmm. know, all of that. I really enjoy that. I enjoy being behind the camera and being creative, like you said, mm-hmm. um, for photos and all that. But it's like the sexual part of it, just the 24-7 um sexualization of having to keep up Mm -hmm. you know that type of image it is very draining once you get i guess i'm just um i i want to use the correct word here but i just i feel like me personally i'm just outgrowing that part of my life Mm -hmm. and maybe other people are not and that's totally fine Mm -hmm. that's um what they enjoy but for me personally i would enjoy doing other things in Mm -hmm. the future that particularly could help people. That's, but that's what that's very cool. That's what life is about. It's about yeah. growth and evolution. And what serves you at twenty doesn't necessarily serve you at thirty. Yeah, exactly. And what serves you at thirty doesn't. And I necessarily- say that a lot to my friends too that are younger than me. You know, I'm like, don't don't put so much pressure on yourself because you have plenty of time. Just mm-hmm. because you see me at my age, you know, we're all we're all on different paths, mm-hmm. and there's. There's no competition and there's there's no rush. Oh God, <laughs> it's okay. I'll do it my Just second to make her time. Feel okay. Yeah, I'm sorry. Start talking with my hands. That's but, okay. Uh, do it. Yeah, but um, there's really no rush um, to just have all of this. What people think is success, they mm-hmm. think it's success, but they really don't know that um, inner happiness is success mm-hmm. and good mental health is success and um. You know, just caring about people, that is success more so than like just mm-hmm. having all of this because you could have really everything and just not be, be okay happy. still, yes. mm-hmm. you know? And that's why I think um, like we were talking about therapy and mental health is so important. It really is the most important because I wasn't even able to reach this level of success without recognizing mm-hmm. that I needed to give attention to my mental mm-hmm. health. And how important it really was for overall growth. I couldn't get to the next level at all with the old mindset that I had. Mm-hmm. So I'm very... Thankful. Your brain runs everything. Yeah. Your brain is in charge. You well, that's what I had to do. Yeah, pretty much man the fuck up and do what I had to do. and Kind of put my ego away and be just more accepting of like learning more about me mm-hmm. and really what triggers me and... Just being more confident and loving myself more Mm -hmm. and being able to share that with other people. Do you try to encourage women to, and and I say women in particular just because I think that we put so much weight on how we look. And as you do more digging and you kind of go deeper inside of yourself, like finding those things that you love about yourself beyond just the way that you look, like is that something that you encourage, you know, younger women that you come in contact with or even just, you know, women who are maybe fans of yours? All women, all ages, you know, because a lot of times I know us women can think, oh, age, it's like, oh, Mm -hmm. yeah, Uh, can affect some people's self, their confidence. Um, But I think that no matter what the age or where you're from, it's just really about loving yourself Mm -hmm. and being confident with yourself. And the more that you show of your true self, the more beautiful you really are. Yeah. You know? And uh, I also had to learn that over the years of living in Miami because Miami can be a very shallow place. Mm -hmm. Brutal. Yeah. (laughs) That's a good word for it. I first moved here from a small town, and um, I really just wanted to fit in. So I was always, like, at the hottest parties with the hottest people, doing Mm -hmm. the whatever, the most... Just doing the most. Yeah, just the most of everything. And realistically... I found out that that was not fulfilling um, in the way that I thought it would be. Um, Miami's like a meat grinder. But this for, also for young women. Oh God! That have come from no, that have yeah. come from places that oh, are no. much smaller. Yeah. It's like yeah. you, you know, yeah. it's like it's ridiculous. And you know, the I would there's a big percentage of the guys here that are just animals. Yeah. yeah. You know. They don't have any concern for anyone else's feelings. Well, I think it also, if you can put it in perspective, and I think we talked about it when John and Floyd were here, and it was like the one thing that like social media, I think, if you can look at it objectively, it shows you just how common beauty really is, right? Mm -hmm. So like there's so many beautiful women. There's so many beautiful women in Miami. There's so many beautiful women in the world and the planet. So it's kind of like- Photoshop. 
It is, so. but it but it forces that also to... puts pressure on women because they don't understand that it is Photoshop. Yeah. Guys, it's yeah. Photoshop. <laughs> so <laughs> like, I mean, even tune. me, I I Photoshop. Everyone photoshops. You know, it's that is the pressure of being online is to look perfect. Mm -hmm. um, even coming here today, I was a little late because I was worried about what I looked like. You know, I wanted to look. Perfect. I didn't tell her that it was recorded, and then she like literally texted me. She on her. She like, by the way, is this gonna be recorded? And I was like, oh yeah, but yeah, it's recorded. No, and, and you know, it's it's funny because we follow some girls on the Man yeah. TF Up page, and it it's some of them are very natural, mm -hmm. and some of them are very made up, and it's it's like I think there's I think there's a lot. I mean, personally, I'm less makeup, mm -hmm. more person. Yeah, you know, um, that's just me. Like I said, I just feel like it, it was, and it takes a lot to get to this place, but it's like, what else are you bringing to the table? Because looks, whether it's photoshopped or not, are everywhere. Like, I can scroll my timeline right now. I can scroll the man TF up now timeline, and every other post is going to be an absolutely beautiful person, right? Yeah. Like, photoshopped well, or not. I just, I just threw in the photoshop yeah. because mm -hmm. I feel no, like a lot of women don't true. understand Facts. that. Facts. And they just think, wow, these people are just so perfect. Mm -hmm. But, you know, we're not. We're just people. <laughs> we're people just Speak like Speak for you. yourself. <laughs> <laughs> well, no one's perfect is what I'm trying to yeah, say. Yeah, no, and no one is. okay. Like, that's... Yeah. That's that's actually what it makes us beautiful, you know, mm -hmm. like I think. I just also think that there's just like beauty is more common than I think we're taught to believe. So with yeah. that being said, it's kind of like, you know, your emotional intelligence. What are you working with in your brain? What's your hustle like? Like yeah. there's so many things aside from how you look that will take you farther. Like I that's a great way to open a door. There's a whole thing on TikTok right now called like, what is it, Pretty Girl? It's like Pretty Girl Syndrome. Everyone, it's like, oh my God. Everyone is, is beautiful to Have someone. You yeah. You know, yeah. it's everyone is beautiful to it's someone. Way to put it. And if they, what you have to realize, and we talked about this with the clothing and the, the mm -hmm. whole oversized America <laughs> is yet you, you have to love yourself. Yeah. If you can't, you know, if you can't find your beauty in yourself, then no one else is going to be able to find it either. No matter how much makeup you put on, no matter what you're wearing, it, it just doesn't come out. Cause I've met some drop dead girls mm -hmm. that you wouldn't even want to sit in a room with. Yeah. That's my point is what else you are you, know, you, what else yeah, I mean, are you, come, what else are you bringing to the table? Yeah. Because the looks are cool, but as soon as you open your mouth, if there's no substance there, if you have no and the energy, well, the that's energy exactly you put out. When those girls need to man the fuck up <laughs> and uh, you know do the inner work that they need yes. to do, they mm -hmm. need to search inside and see why they feel so negatively about themselves or why they are so negative to other people, um, and man the fuck up and get their shit together. I'm, you know? so, I'm so grateful that you actually <laughs> took the time to do the work for you. Because so many, so many people, and, and the world makes it easy to just bank on the superficial, right? And you're able to walk through life. Like, I'm, I'm not kidding. This is a whole thing on TikTok right now. It's pretty privilege. And it's a bunch of, like, young girls talking about the benefits to being pretty. Like, the things that they've gotten in life. You know, oh, I got Lollapalooza tickets. Oh, I got free drinks at a bar. Oh, I got, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. And it's just, it's funny to me. Because I'm just, like, as I'm watching it, and I'm watching it as a 40-year-old who is, of course... Had many a free drink. We could have a dude one where it's like I would love that. I was an asshole. I would love that. No, but, but, but then there's and there's. You know what I got for being an asshole? Whatever I wanted. Whatever you wanted. <laughs> it's kind of the same thing, but it, it makes it just it makes me laugh because this is this whole thing again, right? Like so the the benefits or the privilege that comes with being, you know, mm -hmm. conventionally pretty. But beyond that, it's like I wish that more women understood how empowering it is to. Yes, it's great to get free drinks, but to literally sit there and go, I got this or like that feels good. And it's not a flexi move, but Dar Darla owns her own home. Like that's an incredible yeah, feeling. She's she, buying a condo. Yeah, you know I mean, but she was telling me about how her parents came down. She had Thanksgiving. You had Thanksgiving at your house for the first time, right? Uh, yes. So my uh, parents came to see my house and my dad had not been here since I was 18. I'm 28 now. And, you know, he told me how proud he was of me. Um, and it was very genuine. It was a really nice moment. And that's what I feel like as humans, you know, mm -hmm. we all want that from yeah. our family or whoever we look up to to say, I'm proud of you. Yeah. You know, like. And that you're proud of yourself. Yeah. Like, and like you get to wake up every morning and look in the mirror and, and say, I did this. Well, yeah, that goes for unspoken. Me. But yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> like but, I did um, this for me. But yeah, no, um, definitely proud of me too. So it was not easy. I love it. That's just I think that that's just important though. Like, and I I every time you know when God blesses you with a platform, I think it's important that you talk about those things, but it's like, I just wish more women, because it's easy to get caught up in all of this, all of the onlineness, the pretty privilege and all of those things, but it's like, there's nothing more empowering, I feel like as a woman, no matter you know what your sexual orientation, like when you're in a partnership even, and you know that if something happens to, to your person, you can still hold down the fort, right? You're like, so politically correct. Well, no, I'm just saying no because it's, it's, it's not yeah. it's not specific anymore. But like that's like when I was with my dude, like he hit a rough patch. But just knowing that him hitting a rough patch didn't affect where I lived, what I drove, he could live with me. You know what I'm saying? Like we were good. Like that's such mm -hmm. an empowering place to be at in life. Like knowing that whatever lifestyle you become, a nobody can take that away from you because you gave it to yourself. Nobody can hold that over your head. You know what I mean? Like. And, and knowing even beyond that, that you have the hustle that even if everything goes to shit, like, Darla, you know, no matter what happens tomorrow, you can rebuild it. You know what I mean? Like, you've done it. Like, you you are capable, like you said, of anything you put your mind to. And you know that because you've proved it to yourself. But not everybody gets the opportunity to do that or, or not everybody is even willing to, to risk or take the chance to do that. Yeah, right? it's funny. Like, I was talking to about, about, about a friend of mine to someone earlier and I said... You know, he's the polar opposite of me because I'm all about risk, mm -hmm. you know, and he's like this most conservative, you know, scared of mm -hmm. like taking any risk. Oh, my God. What if I what if something happens? And I'm like, listen, when you die, I'm going to put it on your headstone. <laughs> Here lies Brad with an 800 credit score. <laughs> and I'm like, that's all you're going to take with you. Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like. You know, at some point you have to have that risk. And it's I know it's a lot of fear that people have, but if you're if you lose that fear of failure, you will succeed. Because that's what holds people back. That's Facts. what holds people well, back. One person might say no, but the next will say yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. that but that's yeah. the you know, the fear of failure is what yep. what keeps like, people from taking that first step. I actually wrote that on a list. We have a list of T-shirts, and it, that's on one of them. It's like, don't fear failing. Basically, fear failing to fear. Like, you, you know, know, like I said, I left school in middle school. And since then, I've paid a million dollars for education. Because every time I didn't fail, I learned. And that's... You're just talking about financial losses. I, but like, in, in general, in life in general... If you don't take the risk, if you don't go talk to that guy at the bar that you think is cute or you don't, you know, take that risk to open your OnlyFans page or, you know, you you don't take those risks. Or kick the bum out of your house that's trying to take your money. Yeah. <laughs> to the curb. No fact. Miami scum. That is it. It's Invest a little bit. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you got to take those risks. And then that's that's it. You know, if you fail, OK, tomorrow's a new day. Well, they always say the people that are afraid of losing their money. Sorry, Nestor, that's me now two or three times. Um, the people who are afraid of losing their money are usually the ones who do. And the people who aren't afraid might lose it, but they always yeah, get it. And then you they have always the make it back because yes. they just have that mentality like, I did it once, so I'll do it again. Like, that shit's just paper. Is. I'll print some more. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, no, definitely the fear of failure immobilizes a lot of people. Like just being afraid of failing, which is wild. Failing, failed. failing is part of life. Yes. And if you don't fail, you will not succeed. And you could ask anyone who's ever been in business, and they'll tell you the same thing. You know, you might not fail on a big level, but that's a that's it's always going to happen. There's always going to be setbacks. But each failure, I think, you know, you should take. As a learning experience, and absolutely learn from what went right and what went wrong, and apply that to your next. I mean, you've had—I'm sure you've had ups and downs in your, you know, in your actual business of OnlyFans, and you learn from every one of those things. Well, you know, I lost 500 followers. I lost this. You know, subscriptions are down. What did I do to change? You look at that, and those are all little, you know, failures. But we look at it, you know, the clock's ticking up, stuff's going up, and then all of a sudden it drops off. What did we do at this point to make that drop off? And that's those are all little 
failures, but you get right back up the next day and move forward. You know, today I had a very Monday Monday today. Mm -hmm. And I'm having a very Monday first of the year. His first two weeks of the year is one big Monday. Yeah, it's apparently. one big Monday. <laughs> and um, but it, you know, it was interesting today. You know, I, shit went down. Shit's not working. People are fucking up. And you know what? I'm here enjoying sitting myself. on the couch. I'm enjoying myself talking to you combo. and Darla, and you know, having, having a good a time. Combo. I'm not mad at that at all. Although I was mad for Darla. Darla lost like a million followers on Instagram. Like Instagram snatched her account. So for folks that are listening <laughs> to the podcast, like we 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 go through this on a different level. Like I know Lenny, you guys have been through it with the, you know, the Man CF up brand and oh the, the testosterone pill. And we went through it in a recent um podcast episode of ours on YouTube, which got snatched. Um, you know, but what are some of the rules and regulations? Cause I didn't realize like I didn't know how crazy Instagram I can be oh yeah, with their well, with have the you, regulations. You know the guy I send you the the, and you might think he's crazy, and I I think he's a comedian. JP mm -hmm. send you that yeah. awake with JP. Yeah. So he just did this thing the other day about you know big tech versus person, and mm -hmm. you know, and th the problem that Facebook and Instagram put out there is there is no clear rules. So if you don't have clear rules on what you can and cannot do, then how do you know when you step over the boundaries? There's, I swear to God, there is nothing <laughs> clear on their advertising or anything. Because I've read it all. It's so I ambiguous. Think, I think they just make it so complex for like a normal, you know, user mind uh, to understand. It's just... The I words they, that they choose and the context that they put it in, most people can't read and understand that. I can tell you really exactly what it says. The it says we, are. we we can choose. Change mind, yeah, we can do whatever we want to do. Is basically what it says. It, that's all it needs to say. Yeah. we can do whatever we want to do because our policies can change just really on a minute's notice. They're like the mom of so because I said so. They're basically just one big because I said so. Well, why'd you take it down? Because we did. That's it. That's but why? Them. Because I said so. Well, why isn't it right? Because we said it isn't right. That's like, it. That's, like I feel like that's legitimately the way <laughs> they yes. they handle everything. Because like I said, I I know, but Darla was a pretty good sport. You said that you had you did some things to deserve to be taken down according to their their rules. Yeah, um, but that's also like I had said earlier. Um, over the years, they changed their policies, uh, and what used to be okay is not okay now and they didn't really make it too generally clear for um just a user's mind you know you it's like when you're on social media your attention span is so short you see something you click it you like it you move on to the next thing um i feel like they should have had something way more attention grabbing for the user to really just see it and understand okay do not do this and then it would have been a lot more you mm -hmm. know understanding for a lot of people because yeah. not everyone even has you know um the ability to concentrate to read all of the, the text <laughs> unlike you lenny what they sent you know like uh, i me personally i always just click okay yeah agree agree <laughs> i don't terms of service yeah like i don't i don't really you know have um the concentration to just sit there and read through the whole thing. So if they made it more straight to the point um, and very clear, or if there are people who they know are are using it for something in particular, well, yeah, send them the updated terms. Well, like you know, this is like you're gonna be in violate. That's what OnlyFans. That's what OnlyFans is doing. OnlyFans is allowing. Look, this is clearly able to be done here. Mm -hmm. Facebook, you know, Mark Zuckerberg farts and the policies yeah. change. So, you know, it's just that simple. It's they they have it so I'm telling you, I've had attorneys look at the the terms because I'm like, well, how can Lenny they do just this? He wants to prove them wrong. Like that's really like Lenny yeah, read that's, it all because he just wants to give them the big like yeah. Fuck you. But you can't because they they literally say because, because I, I said, said so. so. <laughs> because I said so. Legit. No, but I was mad. I was actually mad for Darla because the whole point of it is you 
to your point, you put all this time in, you build this incredible following. It's beneficial to Instagram, right? When you have, because now companies are more likely to advertise. They're going to go through, hey, how many mm -hmm. followers do these people have? They're going to spend to sponsor, you know, whatever the case may be. But it's just wild to me because it's like, you know, OnlyFans, it's not as easy. Like, I have to know that you exist on that platform. And I I'm going there for a specific reason. Yes. Instagram, I can just find you, right? Like, I can be scrolling and they might, you know, FYPU, like, for your page, you know, yeah, well, like, find you on my timeline or whatever. It's different. Like, with OnlyFans, now it's a different, it takes a, it's a different type of cultivation, you know, in terms of going out and just getting organic followers to come. Whereas if you have a million people on your Instagram page, yeah. you constantly remind them, hey, by the way, you can also catch me here. The likelihood of them, like you said, liking and clicking and and mm -hmm. moving on is is higher. So it's like they that was whack. That was whack. Was is like, there any way to advertise your OnlyFans page other than Instagram? Um, yeah, by advertising with other girls on their OnlyFans page. Um, I'm not really familiar with all of the ways to advertise. I'm sure there's much more besides Twitter and... Um, but like you said, you can put it in the link tree. Like, we're just... Yeah. It's like, Lenny goes through this all the time with them. Like, Lenny has been banned and has been blocked and has been, you know, our stuff has been pulled down. Crystal from episode six. Yeah. You know, that girl's been blasted 50,000 times. Yeah. And the, the crazy, the crazy part is, even if you kept your million followers, they might not send it. You, They might not see your post. They might have limited the engagement. They limit yeah, how many weird. people see your posts. Yeah. So... You know, if once they have it in for you, you might as well just automatically start a new page and start over. It's just because they they control it like that. Yeah. But I like the, I like the OnlyFans kind of freedom. Yeah. That you have. You would. Do people advertise with you like on OnlyFans? Do you do you do ads on OnlyFans for other people? Yes. People pay me to, you know, to advertise their products it. and stuff like that. We product Help promotion. Them. Mm -hmm. They're OnlyFans. Ah, so you like? Oh, well, I actually, I think I saw a picture of like on your IG with you, like with like five other girls or whatever. Like, so is that like one of those situations? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Because some of them had a lot of followers. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh shit. <laughs> they work. They are out here, but that's a but that's hustling. But like, what about products? Just is OnlyFans open to product advertisement, or is that more difficult? Um, not particularly. Got gotcha. you. But if you had a brand that you worked with and they wanted placement. That's something that they could work. Like out. if Bang came to you and said, "Can you put this six pack of Bang on the dresser next to your pictures?" Well, yeah, and they were paying you for it. Yeah, Instagram. No, but you can't do that on OnlyFans. I don't think that they do because OnlyFans um, is a more sexualized platform, so Instagram is more family friendly. Got you. And um, I think those type of products lean more towards that. But if you had products that were in that sphere, I'm sure they could find ways. I'm sure there's plenty yeah. of people with toys and things of that nature advertising or, you know, doing endorsement yeah. deals with people that have large only fans following. or different things. Yeah. Like, oh, mm -hmm. I wasn't even thinking about one. Yeah. Hmm. Hello. Hmm. That. All right. Dating. What were you thinking about? I don't know. I was thinking about toys. I just said it. Uh -huh. Literally just said about. it. I was. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> if you if you knew. Clip. You That's only, a clip. If Th that's a clip. <laughs> if you only life wide open. <laughs> um, She's getting red. Dating do's and don'ts. It's just the hat. It's clip. A reflection of the hat. Um, what is something to not slide in your DMs and say? Um, because I'm sure you've seen. Oh my god. Anyone that says mommy. <laughs> Done. <laughs> Done. Do they get blocked? The leader? Or just yeah. yeah. I love it. So don't come in with the mommy. What else? Um. I guess, um, I don't know, just people just um, being very entitled, uh, like, oh, I can do this for you. I can mm. I can upgrade your life in this way. I could do this because nothing in life is free. And that's a scam. <laughs> really, they 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 want something from you. Mm -hmm. You know, if they're coming at you with, oh, I have this for you. No, you don't. What do you want from me? You yeah, know? like it's that's really the truth. It's just the truth. It does. And a lot of people don't know that. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, I love the people that are like, oh, the next six people. Well, that's part of the meat grinder down here is the. So that was the, a little free tip for you guys. The, <laughs> the, it's a scam. The promises yeah. of this and I can do this for you. Anything I can do that for you. Someone promising you for free, they're going to want to benefit mm -hmm. somehow. Unfortunately. How do you feel when like married individuals slide in the DMs? Um, that doesn't happen too frequently, but um, it does happen. You know, I just had a guy actually say hey gorgeous to me a few days ago and he had his whole family 
in his profile picture. Mm. Uh, I mean, like he had his wife and three kids and his dog. And they were matching. And the dog. And they were matching. They were matching outfits. I was like, Jesus. Is his name like, Sean? <laughs> I don't know. Call but, me out there, buddy. But um, I was like, you know, hey, this is just. I mean, I'm not even going to entertain this at all. Even if it is a fan, I'm just like, oh, mm-hmm. you know, like, I just felt like that was so wrong to have his whole Would family. Would that now make you question profile. if you're in a relationship and, and your like, man comes hey, to you? are just trying to start a conversation. Yeah, with the whole fam. Yeah, now, like, I was <laughs> like, okay. Now that makes me think twice about the matching PJs. Is it all a front? He should have just started with, hey, I'm a fan. Instead of like, yeah. hey, gorgeous. Because try, that to automatically play. is like kind of crossing. Yeah. I you know, like it's, you're coming in hot. Like you're definitely like. I mean, but started to feel bad for his wife. Do you I delete a lot of paying customers? Do you um, block a lot of um, paying customers? No, this this was, uh, person I was referring to was on my Instagram. Instagram, yeah, yeah. So no, if um, I don't block anyone at all on my OnlyFans, everyone is welcome on my OnlyFans. <laughs> <laughs> Including you, matchy matchy. Like, like, subscribe, all of it. As long as, so yeah, long as that payment even clear, the guy, we're good. But the wife, you could go on the old. Yeah. Because <laughs> at the end of the day, that's not any. Yeah. That's, 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 that's on you. That's on yeah. him. You should that's put that in your headline. If you're married, you only can see me on OnlyFans. <laughs> right. Or just, you can't put the link there anymore. I was like, if you're married. Then it's not my fault. It's yeah. not my fault. No. Uh, that's y'all's situation. He's taken extra steps. No, yeah. but that was something that, like, that used to be, that was. That was probably the most exhausting part of even with radio for me was like when people would come in, whether it was artists, athletes, entertainers, and that overly flirtatious. But when it's part of your job, it's kind of like it's a very it's to your point, it's exhausting. Yeah. Like working in in any sort of entertainment can be extremely exhausting because in my line of work, it's one of those things where it's like I don't want to burn a bridge for an interview or an opportunity in the future. So I can't tell you what a piece of shit I think you are. You know what I mean? But I have to, you know, subtly let you know you have no shot without hurting your very fragile male ego, you know, and without making you feel like a complete ass. So now you're embarrassed. So it's like, you know, but you, you you just know that that's what you're dealing with. Like, this is the space that you're in. And it's like, you know, and it's not necessarily that it's. I'm feeling like something happened. Oh, no. Yeah. <laughs> it happened all the time. Like, I, I, like I, could, I could give you a. Li- I wouldn't do that. But like, there, that was just a part of, you know, it was a part of experience, life. Right. They just come in and, you know, yeah. and it's like, hey. And, and, and it's that overly flirtatious kind of, you know, close talking. Oh, let me get you. Oh, I'm in town all weekend. Like, hey, would you want to meet up for dinner? Like, that does, yeah, happen. <sighs> And yeah. Like I said, and when you're in this business, it's 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 about relationships. So it's like, how do you find this way? And I just not that I don't think that men go through that, but I don't think men go through that nearly as much as women go through that. And it's this it's like walking a tightrope, you know, like I said, and it can be exhausting because it's like, can I just come in and do my job and not have to worry about Feeling your sexual ego? Yeah, that's, you know. It's just one of those things. It can be a lot. Good question. <laughs> but I think guys, for the most part, don't. Nope. They don't. They don't have the intuition to know that there's not a shot or mm-hmm. there. You know, I mean, if well, a okay. guy. First of all, if a guy does not hit on you in the first 30 seconds of a conversation, he's not a guy. <laughs> OK, that's first, <laughs> you know, but to, to not pick up on the signals mm-hmm. that. You know, but they just after don't know. The first yeah. Yes. Yeah. After I the also first think shot. That sometimes you know? they're just, again, that entitlement. Like, I think that there's some in living in a Miami oh, yeah. or existing in this space. I'm sure you've had multiple people with names slide in the DMs or say, you know what I mean? And they automatically think that that gives them the right to because most people don't turn them down. Like most, it, it, it just, it's the nature of, you know, it's kind of the nature yeah. of the beast. And I also am not an idiot. And we've talked about this again. We talked about it with, you know, Isaac. I also know that my, my physical appearance has gotten me opportunities that I wouldn't have gotten without them. You understand what I'm saying? Like, I also know that I've gotten interviews that nobody else in a room got because of how I look. So it's, it's one of those things. It's like the blessing, you know, a blessing and a curse. So you learn mm-hmm. to deal with it. But so it's just, all I'm saying is that it can be exhausting and so to Darla's point earlier when it's like when you get ready to move on from that it's like it's just to have to be on 20 and not only that she's got to be on 24 hours how do you think those men feel how many girls you think they hit on a day (laughs) 
That shit's <laughs> gotta exhausted. be exhausting. I unfortunately not exhausted enough. Not exhausted enough. I wish they'd hit on a few more before they got to my studio. Cause maybe they just would have been all tired out, you know? Okay, so don't say mommy and don't be all up in your profile. Well, yeah, you know, any type of just hey baby, hey mommy, hey sexy, it's like all right. You couldn't you, be more creative than that. You already just <laughs> it's like you're already crossing the line. You don't know me, so why are you saying mm -hmm. any of those comments to begin with? Like just just say hello. What's the, I was going to say, like, what's what's like what's what is the DM that has gotten your attention in a good way? Like what's something that somebody has said to you or like what's some that somebody has approached you with that you've been like, hmm. Um, in what type of way? Um, like me being interested in them or just like just your attention kind of exciting. Um, well, today I got a DM that got my attention. It was very exciting. Um, someone that I really look up to that's in, uh, inspired me and he helps, you know, hundreds of people. Um, he raises money for charity mm -hmm. to give back nice. to help people in need. And he reached out to me. He wanted to uh, meet and talk about some ideas. And that's super exciting to me. Very so cool. Something like that, very authentic mm -hmm. and yeah. genuine. Um, you know, like that's super exciting to me. And I'm going to go do that later. So I'm it. really looking forward to that too. Well, yeah. you're manifesting that though. Like yeah. you're putting that, in, you've said that multiple times, you know, even in our conversation that that's where you're, you know, that's kind of on the, the things to do next. Something like that is exciting. Not a DM like, hey, mommy, come on my yacht <laughs> with my boys, <laughs> you know, in the Dade later. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. Why, why, Where the what, fuck is Dade County? Why did it have to be the Dade, though? Why did it have where to be Where did it fucking go? Carla. You know, where did Dade That's County That's where they're go? at. Why <laughs> did it have to be Dade, though? That doesn't happen in, in Broward. That doesn't happen in the 954. Well, I guess the yachts are, I was thinking more. In, I was going with the yacht, so I was thinking my. Come Dave ride my, just, come ride yeah, my Broward quad plantation. Is, you know, a little. <laughs> Come to my mansion in right. Southwest Ranches. There we go. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's like I'm having a pool party. Like, Come meet me in Pompano. Oh, <laughs> no. <laughs> I'll pass, but thanks. Lauder Hill next. <laughs> no thanks. <laughs> Don't ever go to Tamarack. Oh, she's, oh, she's, <laughs> she's clearly loosening up, and I like it. Darling, <laughs> you're funny. I like that. Um, has anybody ever gotten your attention, like, DMing? Like, like on a relationship tip, like, has anybody ever come at you and been like, and you've actually given them the time of day because whatever they said was actually like, okay. Um, yeah, no, I've met people a lot online. Mm -hmm. Deadly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm not, I get, do you have a rule? See, I have a rule. Like, I'll only have so many conversations with you in the DMs before we have to take it out into, because I feel like that, I feel like that's shady space. Like, eventually, if the only conversations you're having are going down in the DMs, I feel like there's something not above board about the situation. Like, so you get, like, a couple combos back and forth, and then I'm like, okay, either either you need to comment under a picture or we need to have a conversation. Because I'm not quick to give out my phone number, but I just, staying in that DM space sometimes to me feels like, you're a shady bird. It depends on the level of fame also. Got you. Um, okay. Because those type of people, depending on the level of fame. Um, I particularly even, I'm not famous at all, you know, really in my eyes, but um, I still am a very private person mm -hmm. because I don't want people seeing who I'm talking yeah. to or what I'm doing. Um, because like you said, people online could be so judgmental mm -hmm. and it can create an issue before there's even anything yeah. developed yet. Yeah. So I think a lot of times when a people, when people have a larger following or they are famous, um, that it is better to be a little more private. Oh, for sure. Yeah. I just like, to, I just, I can't keep a combo in, in the DMs though. Like I eventually it's got to either, we're going to talk on the phone. Depends on the level like, of excitement. Maybe, maybe you guys are just so excited and you're only talking on the DMs and then you meet up. There you <laughs> go. There you, or no, something. You have to be very careful with that though too. Yeah. People are kooky. I don't know. Um, I just, I don't understand it. How many people, I'm just kidding. Uh, no, I mean I just don't. It's good to FaceTime. Whole... It's different. Face right. Like, yeah, right. Yeah, FaceTime is because well, then you know if you're getting catfish. I mean, yeah. it's that's just the important. A lot of it is, you know, I've just. I grew up meeting people and mm -hmm. talking to them and shaking their hands and, you know, face to face. It's just I don't get the whole online dating. The dating. whole online. No, I mean I get the. I mean I guess I can understand like the Tinder type of stuff and it's you know they're. They're well, looking for something for a meetup, 
But like to start a relationship with somebody or or to be because what do you know about them? Mm-hmm. Well, we just met online. <laughs> Me and you. All of us. All of us. Yeah. We just all met online. And, and look at here, and no. we're talking. I had never met Darla in person. Like, oh, really? I only knew Darla through. I met you five minutes before you got here. Yeah. I looked you up. Oh, yeah. oh okay. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And then I couldn't find and you. And my like, favorite oh, post of you is without your makeup. Oh, thanks. You know which one I'm talking about? Uh, Where you put your eyelashes on and everything? I'm not sure which one <laughs> that is. It's, you have a He's post. Rolled. You have a post oh. where you're. Was there music in the background? Natural. I, like well, I didn't have my phone. Oh, thanks. Oh, like a before and after? Yeah. Oh, awesome. You didn't have yeah. your volume on? That's shocking. Uh, Lenny's that guy that in the middle of the But I had to wear my lashes. You, know, you did. Like, that yeah, that no. would have been bad my business. My lash brand, Elizabeth Lashes. <laughs> there you go. Do they have their own Instagram account? Yes, Elizabeth Lashes Co. Co. Okay, Elizabeth Lashes Co. Where'd the Elizabeth come from? That is my middle name. Ah, yeah. I like it. <laughs> I like it. But yeah, are you? do you do the dating apps at all? I should have brought you some lashes. You should have brought me some lashes. Although <laughs> next time I had to go, I, I I have my lashes done because I do. I'm a firm believer that lashes are an absolute game changer. Like during the pandemic, like that was probably the hardest thing for me. I used to have long ass acrylic nails. Like I loved my nails. I had them for a long time, and then the pandemic, I took them off. And I'm like, it takes everything in me to not get them put back on because they're really they're not good for you. Um, but I've stuck with my lashes, and I do love. And I just think that. Oh, sorry, Lenny. I know this is a conversation is like. Listen, out of your wheelhouse. I grew up with just my mom, and did they do lashes? Sh- that l- you think you think this is a new thing? Lashes? Well, no. I mean, I just everybody's got them now. Um, I mean, a wig. Everybody been had for a long them time. then too. Oh, okay. You know, seventies, Tam- sixties, seventies, eighties. No, she used to like have to put them on. Uh, it was yeah. the craziest thing. I'd yeah. watch her as a little kid. You know. Yeah, like gluing that's them I on. my eyes together. <laughs> I do like usually the individuals because oh the strips are so hard for me to get like all in. Like I can usually get one eye on and then the other one is just a pain in the ass. And I'm always like, I can't. Now I'm like ready to go out. I've got one lash on. The it other could one's, also like, be the lashes you're using because I've been told that my lashes are very easy to apply. <sighs> well, do you have the magnetic ones or are they these? These are glue. Well, the strip is just much thinner than most of. Got the you. Regular lashes. So Got you. Just actually a little malleable, like they're to easier. Press yep. Into like your eye, you know. I got it. Like, yeah. I love. Well, they look beautiful. They're Thank great. You. Um, she just totally avoided my online dating question. Oh no. Okay. Do you have any of the apps? We can still talk about it. Um, <laughs> no, I don't. I don't have any more dating apps. Um, I stopped online dating. Um, after my OnlyFans relationship, I actually met that guy that I dated. Uh, for the three years mm-hmm. that I was talking about earlier, I met him on Tinder. So, okay, yeah. and you dated him for three years. Yes. Okay. It turned out to be an idiot because he was an idiot. Apparently. Yeah, and then after that, I mean, I had done a lot of online dating for many years, but then I decided that I'd rather meet people in person. Person. So yeah. So how do you do that in 2022? Where are you meeting people? Um, really, I just go out. To very casual places because the type of people that I like to meet, um, not in a club. Yeah, yeah, more casual. So like at dinner, if you're at a bar, like not a bar bar, but like if you're sitting at a. See, I'm a. I like to. I like yeah. to eat at the bar. Like I'm a person like I like go Houston's. To let's let's just say yeah, Houston's. Just I still Houston's, like to go out yeah, and um. But the thing is, I'm I'm sober, so I don't drink. Okay. Alcohol. I don't do drugs. Um. So I, but I still enjoy going out yep. and um, I just talk to people, you know, I'm like, I'm sober. They're not, but <laughs> that's, <laughs> but, uh, that's, that's a difficult thing. Well, I was going to say, so I have a, a, a good friend of mine, a homeboy who is sober too. And, but he won't date somebody who doesn't drink. He and won't date I don't know why, that, like, I always figured like, if you are sober, it'd be easier to date somebody who was also sober just because, but like, are you do you have a, a preference either way? Like, do you I really prefer? don't mind as long as you're able to, like, control as yourself. As long as you're not a drunk. Yeah, as, as long as you're able to control yourself. You're not, yeah, sneaking shots at breakfast <laughs> and a Percocet at lunch. <laughs> like, okay, uh, cocaine at dinner or all that. Yeah. Jesus Christ, you know? Like, as long as you're not doing a bunch of drugs and, um, you know, behind my back and taking it to the next level where you can't control yourself, then... I really don't care, you know. We're adults. 
could do whatever. Remember how she said to me a few minutes ago, that sounds like you had a personal experience. That kind of sounded like, <laughs> like, like you either know people that operate in that manner. Well, or, that's just a very Miami way of life. Like you were saying that, yes. and I was like, I could actually picture a few people. Yeah, because like doing exactly from that. Experience living in Florida. Yeah, people are pretty crazy. Wild. Yeah. Wild. Yeah. Wild. So, wild. You know, I have met large selection variety of people. <laughs> Darla, this has been so much fun. Lenny, do you have any other, you know, OnlyFans related questions for our girl Darla? Like any other questions? I don't know. I'm gonna look into OnlyFans. Are are you gonna set up an account? I don't know. Do you have cute feet? I have great feet. Women pay a ton. People pay a ton of money for the foot. Soft. People do ask. Soft, great feet. feet. Do they? Right? Yeah. Soft, great feet. Soft, great feet. And they're very particular about their angles. Their foot (laughs) angles? Yeah. Well, maybe you know, Charlie. Maybe you could start a tutorial class just for the foot thing. Like, listen. So this, these are the best. Well, he he's got it pretty good right there. <laughs> that's that's Great the angle. Okay. And the- so Nestor, make sure we freeze frame this right here. Um, you know, and then Lenny can just take that position and just take the shoe off. He's got it going on. Right Do they there. need to have like buffed tone? Like, oh, yeah, I mean, he's gonna have to take the shoes off. Yeah. <laughs> we need to see your feet, Lenny. Mm-hmm. This next. We need some. You know what I mean? Little. Supplemental income money. You want to see my feet? A little You're going to have to pay for it. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be in his bio. I like That'll be style, in his bio. Right? <laughs> Put it in your link tree, Just man. That Put simple. it in your link tree. He said it. He said it. <laughs> Just that simple. So obviously, Darla, people can follow you on Instagram. Yes. It's at the real Darla Pursley, right? Yes. P U R. That is my new Instagram. S L E Y. Yes. Darla D A R L A. So the real Darla Pursley, you're clearly on OnlyFans, but we don't know for how long. So, you know what I mean? Because we're moving onwards and upwards. <laughs> um, you're doing the real estate thing. You've got the lashes, Elizabeth Lashes. Yes. Right, Elizabeth Lashes Co. Is it regular E-L-I-Z-A-B-E-T-H? Yes. Okay. Lashes Co. on Instagram, so you can follow along. Or elizabethlashes.com. Oh, oh. she got the website. The website. Put it out there. <laughs> yes, honey. And then, like, what else? What what are what are the goals for twenty twenty two? Um, well, just to do bigger and better things, mm-hmm. you know. Um, continue growing mentally, spiritually, um, and just try and work towards more accomplishments of being able to. I really would like to be able to help people as much as I can, mm-hmm. and I'm still figuring out how I can do that with my platform. So. I'm in the stage of kind of rebranding mm-hmm. um, and hoping to go in a much more positive direction mm-hmm. just to be able to help people through my platform and online. Well, make sure you keep us posted with yeah. whatever you've got going on because the Man Cave is always open to you. Um, we're here for it. Something tells me you're, do you write down your goals? Or are you like? I do have vision? lists. Yeah. Um, I don't do handwriting. I always do it on my phone. I know uh, a lot of people are strong believers in manifestation mm-hmm. of handwriting. Yep. But, you know, I've manifested a lot. <laughs> also just mm-hmm. like, Listen, it's just putting it down. Yeah, right, get it out of your brain. Yeah. Put it into the universe, yeah. for sure. Hike it, write it. Sing Have it. you ever gone back and looked at, like, last year? Like, you know, six months before what you wrote? You ever done that? And, and been like, oh, check, check. I did that. I did that. Oh, yeah, definitely. But usually when... um. When I do complete um, a task, I take it off my list. Oh. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. Okay. But Darla, then you don't like. See, I'm. I'm the. I have so I like, many tasks that I want to complete that. I, know, I like the. I, I, like I to use see it more it. for ideas. I like. So to I see like. It. I like spit out ideas. Yeah. And. I do that too. You have to. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like I have. You know, I told you that. Did I ever tell you about that? That one. I have this crazy idea that would it be a great seller, but it's. I don't know if girls will get it. You know? <laughs> Do you think they'll get it? Lenny, I can't tell you if we'll get it or not if you don't tell us what it uh, is. It's kind of embarrassing. I don't know, a little bit. You remember when Trump came out and they had the toilet paper with his face on it? <laughs> right? Yeah. So, so listen. <laughs> oh, God. We actually have this. Where? We actually have this. Going? It's a bathroom thing. Okay. You know, and it's like, Toy you know. Tree. Public public bathrooms, the uh-huh. splashing. People are all yeah. nervous about the you splashing. You want to make Trump piss guards for the toilet seat? N- no. You know the thing in the middle of the piss guard where you sit down on? The yeah. thing that drops out yeah. of the middle? 
we want to put we want to make those mm -hmm. and you can get them printed with like and advertisements gonna, no with people's faces <laughs> like your boss like you take a picture of your boss and you get it printed on these we call them turd this targets is coming from <laughs> One of his experiences. He's like, yeah, he there's something. clearly something that he wants yeah, to either. Put, like, <laughs> something is going. No, on. I'm just saying. It's he like to it was one of those. <laughs> it was one of those ideas that came. We came up with brainstorming here one day, and it's just like you know, it's it's just like a funny thing. You know, people send out those Christmas what, cards. What I was gonna say. What boss? Is going to allow those guards to be in their bathroom? Like, no, I can't it's see it. Here's the thing. You business. here's the thing. You you could send. We were thinking about sending them out as Christmas. You know how people send out kooky Christmas cards. They're like, yeah. I used to have a friend. He would always take some porn Christmas picture. Like he was, <laughs> he had his ass hanging out a trailer, uh -huh. and he was peeking around. He could see his face through the window. Oh, no. You know, <laughs> and he sent that out as a Christmas card. Okay. So this is like something you could send. Like you. The matchy matchy family picture. Yep. Funny you hair. put it on turd targets and you send it to your friends. <laughs> they actually have a name, Darla. Yeah, That's impressive. They have a dot com. Okay, <laughs> they have a dot com. This is more than an idea. It's this is, funny. This is in it's, the works. No, as a gag gift. Yes, it's one of those. Sure. It's one yeah. of those hit and run. I mean, if they could know. make selfie toasters. I mean, twenty years ago, we were Why talking about sure. doing that miso, like doing a miso line. Mm -hmm. You ever? Anybody here ever watch Full Metal Jacket? Like, no. Well, you, know, you know the line, Miso Horny? Horny, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's from Full Metal Jacket. Okay. Well, if you know. they had, uh, yeah, a bunch of influencers on there, uh, <laughs> the guys, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I went into the Hustler store 15 years later. They have a whole line of They that, might be Miso. in the bathroom for a while. If yeah, that's what I'm telling you. <laughs> Telling you, there's, there there's you go. look. Uh, you just got a cosign. Go yeah, for it, buddy. I'm down with it. Go for it's it. It's there. It's oh you know. But God. we have we have those ideas constantly, and I have I have a list of them. And I mean, we have I have 136 URLs mm -hmm. that are just ideas that because every time I come up with an or we come up with an idea, we buy the URL for future there you go. seeds. There's a little there's piece of yeah. There's a little so. I don't know if you do that, but if you do, if you yeah. have any ideas, you, you definitely have on your should list, buy all your URLs. Just start buying all Actually, the URLs. That was done to me with darlapersley.com. Someone else bought it uh, before, and then tried to charge before you I started yeah. modeling, mm -hmm. when I started my modeling career. And to this day, they will not give it to me for like less than, I think it was like six grand they wanted. And, it's worth it. And I, I, I found out who it was. It was actually someone I knew. And um, I reached out to them personally. I said, well, why would you buy this and try and charge me so much? And he's you know, like, because you, know you kicked me. me out of the house. You know <laughs> no, it was a, it was a photographer. It was a photographer. Yeah. It's, but, um, they all do it. It's it's. So now I have darlapersley.co. Oh, hold on a second. What a and that's though. what all the co is from. Ah, Because a lot you. of this, yeah, I just stuck with the dot .co and the dot .co and co. But that sucks because think about how many... Think about how many young girls, especially these photographers, yeah. do shoots with early on in their careers. And they if they buy see somebody, them for like ten dollars. Yep. Yes, and if they see somebody, yeah. they see somebody with potential, and they're just like, okay, this Listen. is coming, right? Like she's gonna want to go get it. What a dick. Listen. Yeah. Dick. That's a dick move. This this You're is one of the dick. this is one of those places Sorry. you could pay back. He knows who. He is. This is one <laughs> of the, this is one of those places you can pay back. <laughs> you know, you can you could put something together for young girls. Saying, hey, if you're gonna get into the modeling game, you're gonna get into the Before IG you game. Do your first photo yeah, shoot. Just go on GoDaddy and yep. buy your URL. Yep. Your names. That's for there you go. That yeah. should be part of your helping people plan or whatever. Yeah. Good business advice for girls that are already in it. And then obviously you can do other monumental work too. I don't know what your other per what your other yeah. goals are. But can I tell you something? Giving out advice like that is some of the best. And you're going to save a lot of people a lot of money. And you're also going to teach them to be smart business people before they even start. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like that's, you are your business in this situation and all of yeah. us right now, everybody. Everybody on, a, every yeah, influencer. So I have, uh, Darla Persley LLC. There you, there you go. I literally am a walking business. Yes, you are. <laughs> yes, you are, honey. Yes. <laughs> buy the, buy the dot com. <laughs> I'm serious by it. He's saying it's worth it. And it yeah. it is. No matter what. But I get I can understand it's a principal thing like Well go, me, yeah, I was gonna say it's more so like I'm just not gonna Give me his name, I'll buy it. <laughs> No, I'm wow. Serious. No, I don't mean to keep it. No, but he'll no, do it and probably know, get it for less. But I'm saying, wow. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll go to him and say, hey, you know, I'm, I'm working with this girl. I want to buy her URL, you know, and 
Jordan. I'll get him down. Not you. Isn't that that makes sense. Listen, very mad. nice, generous thing. Lenny is. Of Lenny to say. I don't like to say <laughs> nice things about Lenny. All it's the time. you know, we it's just mad. Mad. <laughs> it, it's important because, you know, down the road, everyone who's doing this stuff yeah. and gets booted off Instagram is going to realize exactly like yeah. we did, that you have to have your, your own, own platform, estate. your yeah. own real estate online, and that's what it is. Well, you said because they can't censor. Like, who's going to censor your website? Yeah, nobody. Correct. Because it's your you. stuff. You. Well, you're going to yeah. censor it. And as you evolve, and then on top of that, you can control what's up, what's down. You know what I mean? So it is. It's it's invaluable business information. And he'll also go so far as to tell you get every, every. Yeah. Info. Yeah. Get them all. Get, get them the all. dot co, or the dot com, the dot me. Dot get work. the real Darla Persley, Darla Persley. <laughs> yeah. Today, whatever it is, anything with your name, any any iteration Darla of it that you can band. imagine. Yes. Yes. I have who banged Dennis. You have who banged Dennis. Yeah. Okay, you know what, Lenny? Who Dennis dot You have hijacked this conversation <laughs> so many times. Dennis Rodman was working very closely with the Man TF Up brand, so I'm assuming that that's where that yeah. came from. Yeah, we got oh the who banged Dennis dot com. Wow. Although it would probably get a lot of engagement. I I'm know. Sure the stories that could come through there would be amazing. I know. Um, but anyway, Darla, you are incredible. Thank you. I meant it when I said it. Whatever you do moving forward, please just keep us in the loop. You can come back anytime. School the folks on whatever it is that you want to do to that photographer you're an ass hat <laughs> darla says you know who you are but you're a dick and karma will come back and bite you in the ass because lenny's gonna buy all the urls <laughs> hey, they got all of back. them they got my back guys so. all I of got them. you <laughs> and do you have any parting words words of advice words of wisdom where do you want to leave the man tf up fam with before we let you get out of here I feel like I have said all that is on my mind for the time being. But, um, <laughs> Are you going to come back? Yes. Did I you have a good time? Back. Yes, I did enjoy myself. Thank did you get you. more comfortable as it went on? I feel like you did because I guess Darla's funny. Yeah. Like yeah. Darla's, you was out Once here. Once I open up a little bit, you were sure. cracking some jokes. She called it. She said in the Dade. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she She's right. No, mommy. I don't want to go on your yacht. I don't care if it's in the Dade. Like, nah, I don't want none of it. None oh of it. The God. date has gone downhill. I hate to tell <laughs> and clearly, I can't, that's how they're coming in. They're coming through the. I can't. I'm so disappointed in my you know, people. I was born on Miami Beach, so. Yes, you're a Broward the guy. Get out of here. Yeah, I had to leave. You're they chased me out of my own place. You're a Broward boy. Get out. <laughs> I've lived in Broward for ten years, so. Do you like it better? I do. I I don't know. I just feel like it's a lot less pressure. Do you, you know? You know what? And as you get old, like as you get more, as evolved, you get what, as you get older, as you get more involved, you realize like, that shit more matters. mature, right? Yeah, it's yes, more mature, mature. But like, but that matters. Being comfortable, being able as to I just said breathe. earlier, the age doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter, <laughs> girl. <laughs> tell that to your back, and you, I'm just kidding. But no, um, it actually, it, it, I think South Florida proves that on a daily basis. Yeah, though. Right? like really and truthfully, I've seen some incredible. If you take care of yourself yes, and you stay healthy yeah. and you love yourself, yes. It doesn't matter. It really matter. is. Age is, is completely is a mental thing. Listen, for real. it's women are beautiful in general. Mm -hmm. That's, you know, I mean, they're works of art. You've yeah. seen it. You've seen it over for his, millennium. Since the beginning of time. Yeah, Painted since the beginning of time, women have been worshipped. You know, Athena, it's just that that's it. The goddess. Yeah. So Y'all have fallen off in that department, though. And, and well, you know, it, I, maybe it depends where you're hanging out. So... The bottom line is, even as women age, they're beautiful. Mm -hmm. They stay beautiful. They're all works of art. Sophia Loren. No, they are. They all are. of them. Women are absolutely gorgeous and incredible, and they're hustlers, and they're bosses, and I think that women man the fuck up as good as anybody, and Darla's a testament to that. So. <laughs> Thank you so, so much. Thank you for being on our podcast. We appreciate you. I'm going to close out with exactly how I started. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, follow, and share on all the platforms, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Apple, Google, Spotify, Pandora, Buzzsprout. The list goes on and on and on. And before Lenny says it for me, any comments, questions, or concerns, you got any ideas for us, feel free to email me, KimmyB at mantfuptv.com dot co dot org because <laughs> Lenny's got them all. <laughs>